Hey everybody, Brian from Khaki Shorts here. Uh, recently my wife had to call an ambulance for me here in Phuket, Thailand at 3.30 in the morning and go to a local hospital and to tell you it was a bit of an ordeal. So stick around and I'll tell you the whole sort of tale. This is Khaki Shorts where we cover travel, food, and just utter nonsense. So just a little bit of background. Uh, I have had in the past something called C. diff, which is like a bad bacteria you get in your gut. Uh, that I, I took an antibiotic and it killed off enough of the good bacteria that this bad bacteria took over. Really messes your stomach up. You can't stay hydrated. You don't get enough nutrients. You get really weak, lightheaded. Uh, it can be kind of dangerous actually. It can be life ending if you don't get it taken care of. So that's always kind of in the back of my mind whenever I'm starting to have like stomach issues a little bit. So a few days ago, uh, a couple of days I had not been great in the stomach department. But, uh, you know, I was just trying to watch what I eat and maybe I had something that wasn't quite right going out to eat or some bad ice or water that wasn't clean or whatever. Like, I didn't know what the issue was. So we went to bed on a Friday night and stomach wasn't great. Kept getting up and go to the bathroom back and forth. Was running a fever. Uh, was sweaty. Just felt horrible. So finally about 3.30 in the morning, I get up and then I promptly face plant because I passed out. So when I came to, my wife had heard the thunk of me, my face hitting the wall, uh, and she comes in and she's trying to wipe me down because I'm just, I'm burned up, I'm sweaty, I'm on the floor. She doesn't know exactly what's going on. So the first problem here is that in Thailand, they don't have a 911 system like they do in the United States. In the United States you call 911, it goes to an emergency contact center that's run by the county or the city. You can get police, you can get fire, you can get an ambulance, you can get EMTs. Here they don't have that. So she wasn't 100% sure what to do. So first thing she did was call 1155 which is the tourist police who speak English. I think 1155 is tourist police. They speak English. Unfortunately, they are based in Bangkok, not in Phuket. So they were like, there's nothing we can do. You need to call, I believe the number 1669, which is the ambulance service for Phuket. Isn't there a number to call the ambulance? So she hangs up, calls that number. They only speak Thai. As soon as she starts speaking English, they hang up on her. She calls back again. As soon as she starts speaking English, they hang up on her. So at this point, she's kind of panicking a little bit because I am in and out of consciousness. I'm running a fever. I can't get up out of the floor. I'm so weak. So she's not 100% sure what to do. So she calls back the tourist number, the 1155, because at least they speak English. Maybe they can give her some advice. And they're like, okay, well, you need to find a specific hospital you want to go to. Call them directly, and they will send an ambulance to you. So they give her the number to one that's about... 10 to 15 minutes away called Daibuk Hospital. She calls them, uh, finds somebody at the desk who speaks decent English, but he's like, we don't have any ambulances. Like, I don't know if they were out, if they were all out, if nobody was running at night. Not sure what the problem was, but they did not have an ambulance. So they suggested Bangkok Hospital in Phuket Town, uh, which is about 25 minutes away from here. So she goes to call them and then realizes that my phone, her phone, and my mother-in-law's phone are still on the U.S. plans, and they can't make calls outside of the country. My phone, I got a tourist SIM card, and I pay for unlimited data every month, but it only gives you like 15 minutes of call time as far as cell phone calls. I'm sure there's a way. We sometimes will use WhatsApp or Line where you can call people, but only if you have their specific number, you know, do internet calls, things like that. And she's a little bit, not panicked, but she's a little bit flustered at this point. So she comes in, tells me what's going on. I'm still kind of out of it. So I suggested this. Maybe you could go downstairs and find a security guard to call for you. So she runs downstairs to see if she can find one of the security guards. They're nowhere to be found. Uh, we have three towers here where we stay. There's three condominium towers all in the same kind of company. She walks around, can't find them anywhere. They usually sit on little plastic chairs at the entrance. Um, has no clue where they are. So she's getting worried about me. So she runs back upstairs, checks on me. I'm still kind of out of it. 
she's making sure I'm wiped down with water and even a little alcohol, uh, like, you know, medicinal alcohol on a, a washcloth to make she kind of cool me down a little bit because I was running a fever. <clears throat> so she makes sure I'm okay, that I'm not passed out, you know, anything. She runs back downstairs. Luckily, she sees one of the security guards, uh, and she grabs him. He speaks okay English, but he grabbed the older security guard who's been here for a while. And between the two of them, they used his cell phone, uh, called Bangkok Hospital. They kind of explained what was going on in Thai, and then she spoke to them in English. And they're like, okay, we're sending an ambulance to you. So the security guards are like, as soon as they get here, we'll bring them up. She runs back up to check on me. I'm still kind of out of it. I'm a mess. Like, I have no idea what's going on. It seems like in Thailand, a lot of people don't use ambulances. Like, even if you were seriously injured, your friends and family would just kind of grab you, throw you in a taxi or somebody's car, and take you to the hospital. Ambulances aren't a big thing. And then if they are, I think for the normal person, they're too expensive. They wouldn't think about using them, or they're just hard to get. Okay, so finally about 25 minutes later, the ambulance drivers arrive. Ugh, I'm glad you guys are here. So I'm in a small bathroom at this point, uh, but luckily the two guys could get in there enough. They had one of those uh, gurneys, but it folds into like a chair, so at least you can sit in it, uh, so they can take it down in elevators and things. So they kind of get me sat up. Okay, let's go. Ugh. Pull me up into this chair, you know, put the strap on me, take me out into the elevator, take me down, put me in the ambulance. Uh, my wife could ride with them. Luckily, she's really good about grabbing clothes and documents and our insurance cards and everything else we needed uh, and some money. She grabbed all that. Uh, and we, the ambulance ride, I barely remember. I was sort of in and out of it. Get to the hospital, Bangkok Hospital, which is about 25 minutes away. They take me inside. Nice, clean emergency room. It's dead, though. I think maybe there was one other person in there the whole time. I'm used to U.S. emergency rooms where they are blown out with people screaming and hollering and throwing up and gunshot wounds and who knows what else. This place, very quiet. Uh, there's a bunch of nurses. I loved how the nurses and a they all had these like blue jumpsuit kind of things on that said nurse or practical nurse or so you could see what they were uh, really easy when they were talking to you. So after kind of examining me, the doctor came in. Uh, first thing they were worried about was where I fell. I hit my right eye. Uh, it wasn't really swollen on the outside. I mean, I could see out of it, no problem, but they just wanted to make sure there was no internal bleeding. So they took me to do a CT scan. Uh, they rolled the entire bed in there. Kind of, I just kind of scooted over on another one, did the CT scan, brought me back. Uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, they came back and said, yeah, we looked at it. There's no internal bleeding. You're probably okay there with the head. It's just going to be sore. But the problem is you're seriously dehydrated. Uh, and they did a blood draw and did a test on that. And my uh, white blood count was severely elevated, which means I'm fighting some kind of infection. Uh, they just don't know what yet. So at that point, they decide they are going to admit me. So a few minutes later, they take me upstairs, uh, put me in a room. Uh, they go ahead and start a saline drip, uh, get me on a couple of meds, and I'm I'm out of it. I'm kind of in and out, falling asleep. You know, it's just a mess. And at this point, it's like five or six in the morning. Uh, my wife stayed with me all day. They took very, very, very good care of me. Uh, sh they actually, the rooms are really nice. She's got a, there's a quick video I'm going to show here that's just, we weren't really worried about taking videos at that point because, you know, we had bigger things to worry about. Uh, she took just a quick one to the room. Uh, you come in, there's a bathroom on the right. Uh, there's a little table with two chairs. There's the hospital bed. There's also a, like, a futon couch. Uh, and they gave her pillows and blankets and everything so she could lay there and actually sleep overnight uh, Saturday night with me. So she could uh, kind of help keep an eye on me. I think a lot of times they do that. The nurses, if you have family, they would rather the family stay with you so that they can watch you uh, be in the room with you all the time in case you decide to get up and you pass out. Or if you need something, it's easier than having to get the nurses all the time. They like to have family in the room, which is a little different than the U.S., so the next day, I'm feeling slightly better, but I'm having trouble with my vision. Uh, I think some of it was a side effect of some of the meds they were on. Part of it was the swelling around my eye where I hit the wall. And I also suffer from a thing called ocular migraines, uh, which is 
I used to have migraines when I was younger and it's kind of switched. So instead of like a pain, like a headache, it messes up my vision. I get like halos around lights and fog and like black and white spots in my vision. So I was having all that. So I couldn't play on my phone. I couldn't read. I couldn't watch TV. I couldn't do anything. So they had to kind of treat me for that. They were treating me for the dehydration. Uh, oh, the other thing, meals. They, these were really good meals in this hospital. I got to, I mean, it's much better than any hospital food I've ever had. Now I was on a soft diet because I was having a lot of stomach issues, but so I ate a lot of chuk, which is um, like boiled rice. Uh, we all like maybe use some ground up pork in it. Had a lot of uh, fish. We had either boiled potatoes or mashed potatoes, but the food was actually seasoned really well. They brought it right up on time all the time. It wasn't like, I don't know what I'm gonna get my meal. Seriously happy with that. I think I had seven meals while I was there. <clears throat> so that night, the, the, the second night, my wife decides to go home because she needs to check on her mom who's here by herself and she's in her 80s. So she came back to check on her, decided to stay the night at the condo, uh, left me in the hospital by myself. But I mean, I had nurses, they took care of me. So the next morning, my wife actually had to go to the bank with my uh, mother-in-law. We were trying to get her a visa, so she had to do some work at the bank and they had an appointment. So she went into that with her. I talked to the doctor when he came in about nine or 10 o'clock. I was doing a lot better, uh, was getting hydrated, <clears throat> could stand up. I'd actually got myself dressed. <laughs> and uh, instead of like a hospital gown here, they give you like almost like pajama pants and then a like a jacket thing that you put on and tie so that they can take that off if they need to do blood pressure or listen to your chest or anything. So I actually got up, got that, was actually eating, sitting up uh, in the chair, was feeling a lot better, so they decide to uh, release me. So she gets back right as they kind of told me that. So here's what they do in Thailand. Bangkok Hospital is a private hospital. There's two different kinds of hospitals here. There's government hospitals and private hospitals. Government hospitals are for Thai people. The government pays for those. It's kind of like social health care, like they, they will be taken care of there. They also have private hospitals where the individual or if you have insurance will have to pay for it. The government doesn't pay for anything. Usually the private hospitals are nicer. Uh, they usually have air conditioning. You're usually in your own room. Uh, there's just a lot more perks and sometimes usually, especially in this case, I think the doctors and the nurses are more prone to understand more English because they're treating more expats and foreigners. So they gave me a call on the phone, said, we have gotten in touch with your insurance company. We've filed the paperwork. Uh, they've decided they're going to release you. So give us about two hours just to make sure the insurance company gets final approval and then you can leave. My wife got back during this time. I went ahead and got dressed, got the IV taken out of my hand. I was, you know, ready to go. They call back and say, okay, everything's been approved. The only thing you're gonna have to pay for is 220 baht because my wife had ordered two meals from the cafeteria to be brought up. And that's the only thing we had to pay for was, and 220 baht is about $6 US, which is for her two, her two meals. Everything else was completely covered. So what they do at that point is they have someone who will actually walk you down to the, the cashier, I guess. It's, I mean, it's a nice office downstairs and they will kind of show you what everything was what you owe, you'll go ahead and pay all that at that time. They'll sign your discharge papers and then you can leave. Since our insurance company paid for it, we didn't get like a detailed bill of how much everything was, but they kind of had it as we were signing everything and I'm pretty sure it was 39,000 baht, which is about $1,100 US. Now when we first checked in, my wife was looking at kind of their prices of how much it was gonna be for things, which they're a little more upfront with. And they told her it was going to be twelve to 13,000 baht a night uh, for the room, for having me in a room. And she was a little worried about that, but they were like, don't worry, if the insurance doesn't pay it and you have to pay out of pocket, we'll only charge you about a little less than 6,000 baht a night. So we kind of figured it up and crunched the numbers. And if we had not had insurance and had, had to pay for this out of pocket, now think about this, this is an ambulance ride. They checked me out in the ER did a CT scan, they did a chest uh, x-ray, they did blood work, they did uh, some other samples to make sure I didn't have that C. diff, which I didn't luckily this time. Two nights in the hospital, all the nurses, uh, you know, checking on me. Uh, medication, all the medication was included and it would have cost us out of pocket about 700 US dollars. So if you think about what that would have been in the US, for the ambulance ride, the ER, the two nights in the hospital, the medicine, 
the doctor, gastroenterologist that came to see me, you're talking probably eight to ten thousand dollars or more. I mean, it's just insane the price difference between the US and the rest of the world. Cannot say enough nice things about Bangkok Hospital. They were great. All the nurses and doctors I came into contact with were nice. Everybody was super helpful and they took very, very, very good care of me. Uh, I have no problems with being treated uh, outside of the U.S. now. Uh, you know, I was a little worried before. It's like, you know, I don't know what's going to go on. Everybody spoke enough English to where I could get my point across of what I needed, of uh, my pain levels. The gastroenterologist was actually trained in England. His English was excellent. So I'm very, very happy with it. So if you come here, make sure, one, that you have some type of insurance, even if it's just travel insurance that you can get reimbursed for, just in case. Um, and kind of uh, do a little research beforehand to see which numbers you need in case you have to go to the doctor or go to or get an ambulance or go to a hospital just to have that stuff up front in your hotel room in your airbnb in your condo whatever just to be safe uh, i think i will do a little more research from now on we have some friends of ours who sent me a screenshot of like all the numbers of the different hospitals and things so we'll have that uh, going forward so i'm just glad that my wife didn't panic she was a little more prepared and came out of this uh, doing pretty well. So thanks everybody for watching. Be sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button bell icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, and we will see you in the next one.